Uh, okay, sir, please uh, start with the presentation, sir. We are second. Okay. So, good evening, everybody. You can hear me, right? My mic is on or muted? Uh, you are on, sir. We can hear you. <laughs> okay. So, good evening, everybody. And, and thank Manavi and Arvind for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. So, we start with what actually is Koloboma mean? So, basically, it is derived from a Greek word called Koloboma, meaning mutilated or curtailed. The malformation refers to basically to a notch, a gap, hole, or fissure in any of the ocular structure. The prevalence is reported as 0.14 of the population. And what is important for us to know is 43% of these eyes will have coloboma associated retinal detachment. So, uh, sir, so, uh, the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, a little bit about embryology. Uh, basically, it's like uh, what is embryonic fissure is, it forms as a somewhere around 7.5 millimeter stage of fetal development. And by 10 millimeter stage, the closure starts in the middle and proceeds on both the directions. By 18 millimeter stage, it's approximately six weeks of the gestation, it's quite early. That all except the most proximal portion of this embryonic fissure is closed. Now, what happens if there is an improper closure of this embryonic fissure? Then uh, it can be due to teratogenic insult or various uh, possible etiologies. We do not exactly what precipitates it. But what happens when embryonic fissure is not closed, the first pressure lands of having the coloboma. Now, it's obviously what you see is like a embryonic embryology. The earlier the insult, the larger will be the defect. Uh, so, coloboma grossly divide into typical and atypical. Typical, as we know, the embryonic fissure is along the inferior nasal quadrant. So, the coloboma location will be somewhere, as you see here, the inferior nasal quadrant, anteroposterally oriented from disc towards the aura. It can be bilateral. It can be associated with some entry segment changes, such as ciliary body coloboma, associated lens, and Zonulson iris coloboma as well can be associated with microphthalmus, nystagmus, and may associate it with other various systemic syndromes and ocular syndrome as well. Or typical coloma is anywhere other than the inferior nasal quadrant. Like for example, you see here, macula is here, disc is here, it is in a superior nasal quadrant. So now embryonic, embryologic basis, we really do not know exactly why it happened, but probably possible hypothesis, it can be due to rotation of fetal fissure, or it can be intrauterine inflammation, and so on and so on. We really exactly don't know why it happened. It can be either complete or incomplete. What it does mean, it is either full thickness or partial thickness defect um, leading to coloboma. It can be just involving the macula, or it can be involving the disc alone, and you have isolated coloboma here, you can have associated disc feet, and you have a maculopathy as well. So just a word about disc, optic disc within the coloboma as well. So if you see here, uh, in a first, there are six types of, uh, the types were described by Dr. Lingam Gopal. In the first three groups, disc is outside the coloboma, and the next three, disc is within the coloboma. Now you have a coloboma, but disc is normal and outside the coloboma, that is type one. Type two, disc is outside, but it is dysplastic. And in type three, they have independent coloboma that is apart from the regular your chorioretinal coloboma. Coming to next three, disc is within the coloboma, but when it is normal, you call it as a type four. 
when disc is having its own coloboma, but within the coloboma, that is type 5. And the last one where disc shape is not identifiable, but what you look at is the blood vessels are emanating from somewhere within the colobomatous area. You assume that probably that is anatomical location of the disc, which we are not sure about. So why it is again important, first three groups, first three types, vision is generally better. Probably macula also is spare in this scenario. And next three, vision is relatively poor. Also, microphthalmas is more commonly associated with severe anomaly like type 4, 5, 6. Probably this indicates the disease is more severe or a defect is more severe. And first three, myopia is high myopia is much more common than the other three. So, a little bit of histopathology or pathoanatomy, let me put it. What you see here is a, this is the retina here. This is a just make a cross section. Now this is inner retina. This is outer retina. Now near the edge of coloboma here, the retina splits into two layer. This outer layer runs as an intercalary membrane. Inner layer curls around and merges with the RP. This is RP here. Okay. And this curvature and this hump-like thing which is created called as locus myonaris resistance. See, this is a loss, least resistant area and very prone to split here and develop retinal breaks. And that's one of the commonest cause of detachment in these eyes. The hump here, as you can see here, this arrowhead, this is the hump where retina curls in, increased thickness here, but two layers are here already. So increased thickness here at age of coloma margin. Okay. So, this is obviously outer sclera and chorite stop shots here. So coming to the today's topic as detachment in eyes with choroidal coloboma. Now, why these eyes are different compared to others? As I said, my first slide, you have very, very high incidence of retinal detachment in these eyes. Occurrence of detachment and location of the breaks do not follow the classic rules what we learn, all of us as a link of or uh, Skippon's rule. Classic principle of detachment, RD management cannot be applied in this scenario because of the regular rules cannot be followed. And also we need to differentiate between coloboma related detachment and coloboma associated detachment. So we'll come to that one by one. Also, in these eyes, there is a, because as we look at this coloboma area, there's no practically no RP, no chorides, so no pigments. So there is a no, there is no practically no contrast. So identification of the breaks preoperatively become extremely difficult. That is one. Second thing is, because you do not have pigments, difficult to get, get a real laser reaction. And that's why no retinopexy possible here. You cannot close the brain. That's another practical difficulties when you are handling these detachments. You have a very, very strong VR adhesions along the edge of coloboma, as this here is age you see here. And almost all the eyes, particularly when a primary surgery are dealing with irrespective of age, there is almost no PVD when you take this eyes for surgery. Uh, it can be extremely difficult to induce posterior highlight separation. There are associated challenges. You have microphthalmas, microcornea, coloba can be very deep, so long axial length, so that's a practical difficulty while dealing with these things. Microcornea and microphthalmas, when you have your sclerotomies are closer to the limb, corn, limbus, what happened with this? Particularly when you are dealing with now uh, wide angle visualization system, your Instruments can bump against your biome or recite, whichever you are using, and in, the, in, the, in between, you can keep on losing your, your surgical view. Okay. Also, sometimes because of microcornea, lens is much, much contact lens of you're using, or even biome system, lenses are much longer, bigger than the cornea. So, you need sometimes a special type of lens, what you get for a pediatric surgery or uh, a lens with a large, smaller diameters. Eyes can have associated scleral fistula in a coloboma, when particularly this is important when you are planning to use a silicon oil, it, oil can enter through that in a subarachnoid space or go along the optic nerve head behind. Out pouching of the optic disc coloboma, 
which sometimes can communicate with subarachnoid space. As I said, what you see here, this is the opening here, this is here. And when you do ultrasonography, particularly look for, you can see the defect here in a wall. It is connected with a subtenant space here. And here also there is a gap in a, along the nerve, sorry. So you need to identify all these things. Also, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Associated, you can have a lens and iris coloboma as well, angle disc genesis, so higher incidence of glaucoma in these eyes, and extraocular muscle abnormalities as well. Muscle insertion can be away from the normal location, anatomical location. Muscles can be extremely thin, insertion can be just very thinned out. And what is important here is out bulging in a colobomatous area, may not be disc, but coloboma here, and particularly if you are opening for scleral buckling, if you are planning, sometimes you have extremely thin out sclera there, and you, are, you can land up in a globe perforation. So while opening conjunctiva over the colobomatous area, you have to be extra careful. Now, coming to retinal breaks in these eyes, you can have breaks can be within the intercalary membrane, that is this membrane, as you see this arrow here, black arrow, if this is a break here. You can have a break at the locus, minor is resistance along this edge here. Okay. Or you can have a break even in the retina near the edge of coloboma. Or you can have peripheral break anywhere. This is just a dramatic a schematic representation. You have breaks within the coloboma. You can have a macular hole. You can have along the edge, you can have peripheral break. Okay. So, we need to understand detachment of conf uh, configuration of the detachment will change depending on location of the break. We'll come to that one by one now. Now, suppose you have a peripheral break alone. Okay, there are no other breaks. So what you have is this will be a detachment like any other break matter in a retinal detachment as you see here. And detachment stops short of age of the coloboma. As I told you, these are form attachments are here. So detachment will not encroaching on the coloboma here. Okay. Only peripheral break. No ICM detachment, intercalary membrane also is intact. So these cases can be dealt with other regmatogenous, like, like what we do manage other regmatogenous retinal detachment. This is like a detachment associated coloboma. Coloboma is not a cause for a detachment. So depending on the break, whether it's peripheral, or posterior, whether it is buckleable or not, you manage these eyes like any other regmatogenous detachment. And this is one of these cases. This is the same eye where, where I did a buckle and having an excellent outcome here. You see the buckle height here, attached retina. This is the CRA patch here. Okay. So here, just you while managing as if take, ignore the coloboma, do like any other regmatogenous retinal detachment. But when you come to breaks where you have a peripheral break, and you have a break in a locus minoris resistance. Now, this break sometimes you may not see. You may see only peripheral break. What a clue here is RD extends in a coloboma area now. Okay. So we have a normal retina detach and variable detachments of intercalary membrane. That is the involvement. An intercalary membrane, sometimes you cannot see break here. Okay, because main break here is a locus minoris resistance or sometime break near the age of the coloboma as well. Now these eyes, you cannot manage only with the buckle. So when you have a RD involving normal retina and extending on the coloboma area, these are the eyes you plan for vitrector. Okay, this is one of those OCT, again, Dr. LG's presentation. You see the OCT going through the coloboma margin here. And as you see the gap here, detached retina, and there was a break here. But this, you could get it on OCT. This is a picture subsequently after management. This is close, the same uh, location. But obviously, while managing these eyes, you cannot ma see this patient, uh, this uh, break intraoperatively or preoperatively. So these eyes, obviously, you need to plan vitrectomy. Now you have a break only in ICM. No other break. So what we'll have here, Rest of the retina, normal retina is attached. You have a depending on break, depending on a, a contraction of the ICM, you have a variable amount of detachment of ICM. And it stops short of 
your coloboma margin. Now, these eyes can safely observe. You did not do any surgery. Now, depending on about prophylactic laser for these eyes, generally we do not recommend, particularly if disc is involved within the coloboma, because doing laser beyond this, because we do not know where exactly break is. So though break may be here, but they always have a theoretical possibility to break around. So what to prevent that, you need to do laser all around 360 degree, all around the coloboma. And if a disc is involving in a coloboma, you can damage nerve fiber layer and say compromise visual outcome signal patient's vision significantly. Even vision, existing vision can significantly go down. So prophylaxis you plan only if disc and macula is not involved in a coloboma area. So you have ICM break. You have, as you see here, you have breaks in a locus minoris resistance. Now, peripheral break may be there, may not be there, but this is a typical scenario and this is the commonest presentation what you would see in a coloma related detachment. So these breaks leaks through these breaks at a locus minoris and uh, ICM break, and you have a variable extent of the detachment is a partial RD part of retina is attached here. And these are the eyes again need vitrectomy. So the buckling part, as I said, is a small group. Most of these eyes need vitrectomy. Now there are certain concerns when you plan vitrectomy in the eyes where to make sclerotomies, dealing with a clear lens and coloboma of the iris, and silicon oil in eyes with iris coloboma. So we'll go one by one. So as far as sclerotomy is concerned, the misnomer is what, I mean, rather we believe that most of the time, if I with a coloboma, sclerotomy should be made anteriorly, not necessarily. You can have a microcornea, but axial length can be normal. Rest of the eye can be normal, still having a coloboma. You can have a normal cornea and you can have a coloboma. Now, if you have, a, so this is an elegant study done by Liu et al. So you can have basically anatomical position of the ora serrata is, is normal in this eyes and what matters is change in a corneal diameter. So in fact, if cornea is small, you can go even up to 3.5 to 4 millimeter or sometime beyond that. But if cornea is large enough and sometime aura may be a smaller one, so you have to go anteriorly. So, so you need to understand the difference. Sometime you can just do transillumination uh, or you can do indirect ophthalmoscopy to identify the aura before making sclerotomy in these eyes. So this is typically what you do. Just as you say, as I said, safely you can make a sclerotomy at 3.5 to 4 millimeter. Here again, I open the conjunctiva because I would prefer to do put encircling encirclage for these cases. You can use 23 gauge or 25 gauge depending on surgeon's preference. Now, specific precautions, what you need to say is, as I said, abnormally reduced axial in associated micro microphthalmus. Eyes with an extremely large coloboma, as I said, it can be out and coloboma sometime can be extending in a meridian where you have a, you are planning to make the sclerotomy and there sclera can be thin or uh, anatomical uh, landmarks can be can be changed. So you need to look, examine it properly and plan it accordingly before making your sclerotomy. Coming to the lensectomy part, what we need to understand here is lens is more or less normal size even though you have a microcornea or microphthalmus. But also it's very important to understand lens is sometimes extremely hard. Sometimes you want great floor nucleosclerosis you see at the age of 14, 15, 16, 20. So it can be very misleading. So you have to anticipate that and plan accordingly. Here I decided to do 20 gauge because the lens was very, very hard. You can see lensectomy going in pregnancy. There is no, no difference as far as routine lensectomy pattern. What we do, we have iris coloma as well here partial promo, you can use it and expand here. Now, not necessarily to do lensectomy in every case. We learn with our experience with ROP and small babies that you can manage your direction of the sclerotomy. And if lens is clear, you can still get away with, without removing the lens. So as far as possible now, we prefer not to do lensectomy unless there is already some amount of lenses or lens is causing hindrance or having a sinicia or 
So vision, vision is compromising. Obviously, you need to sacrifice lens, otherwise not necessary. And gauge, again, depends on surgeon's preference and how hard the lens is to the extent sometimes there are a few cases I have to, I mean, now obviously you have an excellent quality of phragmatome, but previously rather when phragmatome quality was not good enough, we and still sometimes you need to do limbal section to deliver the nucleus out and finish the remaining part of lens, lens aspiration with your cutter. So vitrectomy is another important thing. The retina is mobile here. As I said, there is no PVD. So extreme difficult to induce PVD with a mobile retina and high risk of creating iatrogenic problem. And as you see here, as this is a tricot I use, and what is happening, I'm trying to induce PVD and because of mobile retina here, I got it. So this is one of the iatrogenic break. You will see one more here coming up, but what is happening? But, but unless, unless you induce PVD, surgery will not be successful in eyes. This is the most critical step. This is going to take a lot of time lot of patients you need, but without inducing PVD, you cannot complete these cases. So spend enough time, spend enough time, go gently and keep on gently lifting the poster highlight, try to shape it all around. The problem is again, because as I said, vitreous is firmly adherent here along the margin of the coloboma. And when you induce PVD, what it leads to sometime there may not be a break along the locus minoris, but now your manipulation can create or induce some hydrogenic breaks along the locus minoris, which probably you may not be seeing because overlying retina may remain intact, but there is a gap between now here, coloboma, and under the retina here, communicating with you subretinal space. So we have to keep that thing in mind. So try to be gentle, firm, but spend enough of time. Most of these eyes, most of the eyes, particularly when you are doing primary surgery, PBR is not there basically because there is no pigment dispersion here uh, to cause the PBR. Generally, PBR will be with a secondary detachment or recurrences um, and, and so on. So, so, as I said, mobile retina, this is the second break here which I created is the same eye. There is a high risk of iatrogenic break, but somehow I, to, I could get posterior highlight separated. You need to identify membranes in a uh, breaks in an intercalary membrane. If you see here, probably difficult to, I think, you don't know whether tiny, uh, there's no contrast here, but when you zoom it, look carefully, this is the one, this is the one here, this is another one, three breaks were here. Okay. Sometimes you have a taut ICM band along this coloma margin. The reason it's important to identify this is because this break next to it, and if you do not identify it, whatever you do, this dot ICM will stretch, not allowing this area to flatten, and this can be a source of recurrent detachment later on. Okay. So coming to fluid air exchange, if you have a break in the inter intercalary membrane and ICM, and uh, this uh, inter like a locus minoris, it's become simple. You just do routine fluid air exchange. You don't have to really drain to the break because there are breaks in a coloboma area, you hold your, your back flush needle or extrusion needle or your cutter, whichever you are using to suck the fluid and start through air exchange. And as you keep on removing the fluid, peripheral retina start getting flattened up. There are few situations uh, I have not added here the, that old last sending artery sometimes have, have subretinal bands and then those bands can be can be holding the retina mechanically up. So in that scenario, probably you may have to do peripheral retina after retinotomy to remove the subretinal bands and then do FG. So most of the cases retina flattens when you drain SRF over the macula, over the sorry, coloma area. But sometimes what you happen if there is no break here and there is ICM break may not intercalary, ICM may not be able to drain to the locus minor is a break. So what is happening here, unless you drain through the peripheral break, you see the retina become bullous here because there is no way fluid to come out and air will be pushing the retina back, making it more bullous. So you need to drain to the peripheral break. Once it is drained, the retina is flattened down here. So if retina is ballooning up during your fluid air exchange, you anticipate that there is no communication in a subretinal space and this coloboma uh, margin, probably we need to do some another retinotomy to drain the subretinal fluid. Okay. Once the retina is flattened, 
sorry. So uh, there can be a detached ICM. Most of the time, you do not have to do anything for that. Please ignore it. As long as peripheral retina is flattened, this was a break through which I drained. As peripheral retina is flattened, okay, and if there is no residual subretinal fluid, you can ignore this stretch ICM most of the time. Yes, rarely we need to give relaxing incision or sometimes people have described a glue or patch, which most of the time does not work in this area. But very rarely, what we do is give relaxing incision, particularly if it is very taut, as I said, near the break, which that previous video and I was showing you, which otherwise ICM would keep that break lifted up and can be a potential cause for a recurrence lateral. Now, if you decide to relax it, give relaxing incision, what we need to look at it is quite some time, normal retinal breaks, normal retinal blood vessel, which are emanating from the disc, they go through the intercalary membrane, through the columbovetus area, and then they course towards the normal retina. And now if you cut the intercalary membrane and probably either you will damage the retina, damage that blood vessel and probably will end up either bleeding and also the peripheral healthy retina can become ischemic. So while giving relaxing incision, you have to be careful enough that avoid those blood vessels. Okay. And, and as far as possible, as I said, if you avoid giving relaxing incision. Okay. Uh, coming to laser photocoagulation, all peripheral breaks or break if you have can be, will be laser. Now, as I said, you do not know where the break is uh, along this coloboma margin. And because while inducing PVD, you may end up creating some hydrogenic split slits like break here. So it is important to cover entire margin of the coloboma and also all around 360 degree laser. So that is what ideally should be done as you see here, laser along. Now the, some precautions you take here because if disc is involved in a coloboma or macula is very close, probably you want to do a little bit lighter laser here or give a calculated risk that macula I will not laser to start with. If patient comes with a recurrence, maybe I will do laser for that. Okay. Laid red laser, again, you prefer here, particularly the margin of color one if a disc is involved because you have a deeper burn. So probably you may avoid damage to the nerve fiber layers which are approaching to the disc from the peripheral retina. Definitely avoid heavy burns near the disc and around the disc. So internal tamponade, very selected cases, you can get away with gas, particularly if a break is only periphery or superior break, but most of the eyes, silicon oil is prepared. Okay. Now, if there is inferior eye, if there is iris coloboma, there is no need to do inferior iridotomy. But if your patient is faking, and if you have a iris coloboma, while injecting silicon oil, just you have to be a little bit careful, otherwise oil can, oil, oil can come through the coloboma into the anterior chamber, so don't overfill. Okay, this is just the patient which we saw video, this is the intro of picture, and this is full stop. This is the buccal effect encircling band, and this was where I caught this retina into my port, laser I did around this, and this was another peripheral hydrogenic break. And you see the laser around this. This is another case, you can see the silicon oil reflex, detachment here, silicon oil field I this montage. Just coming to results that uh, overall success rate with now uh, modified techniques, what we are using and with the new good instrumentation is all anything more than 80%. So we are better off. This is just a little bit about our uh, data. We analyzed long back, this was 148 eyes. We are having almost more than 280 patients now. So 148 eyes, the male preponderance, you have 35% were one-eyed and average age was 20. So they are relatively much younger. Associated iris coloma was presented almost more than 90% of cases and macula was involved in 63% of cases and disc involvement was in 68. So no PVD, 85% patient did not have any PVD and 11, they have PVD. Now ICM was, break was located ICM in 103 eyes and elsewhere retina in 74 eyes and we could have hydrogenic breaks we created in 34 eyes. So as a final outcome, when you look at it, okay, uh, 
measured here y is we have a silicon oil as a tamponade here mean follow up was 30 months 92 percent of ice subsequently underwent silicon oil removal and 21 percent needed more than one surgery but we could achieve normal uh, like anatomical success we could achieve in more than 95 percent of ice but what you see here is 32 percent at a high iop and needed locoma management subsequently pre-operatively 125 patients had less than 360 vision post-operatively reason also is quite good so it's very gratifying surgery if done properly this is just to algorithms of just to summarize if you have a rd sorry if you have a coloboma um, rd is an rd if you have, there is uh, break is not involving the coloboma as i said you can try either scleral buccalum but if you have posterior break you do pass when i take tummy but break having involving a normal retina and icm you can try pneumatic retinopexy, very selective. We have only one or two cases we did, but I think eventually it did not work out. We have to do vitrectomy as well. Pass when a vitrectomy would be the option. You can have a break localized detachment with ICM. Either it can be observer as we discussed, laser can be done along the barrage uh, to along the margin of the coloma in a select cases. Coming to recurrences, as you see, post SOR, we have almost 22% of eyes recurrent detachment commonest cause was PVR, okay? and, uh, but there are a few other reasons. If you do not, if a vitrectomy is incomplete, if there is written post, written post highlight, and as I said, if your PVD could not be induced properly, this residual visceral gel can be one of the cause for recurrences. Inadequate retinopexy along the coloboma, as I said, like if macovia is there or disc is there, we would like to do a little bit conservative and suppose you miss something there, chances of recurrence are there. ICM detachment dissecting through sometimes this start ICM, as you see this age, and detachment is throttle and is stretching this area and not allowing to flatten. And once, as long as oil is there, it may hold on, but the moment you remove the oil, these eyes will come back with the recurrent detachment and probably better to do laser, additional laser barrage if you see like this before planning as to all. Okay, so silicon file removal in these eyes is you have to be extremely careful. Uh, evaluate the coloboma margin. And if necessary, add some laser before going ahead with SOR. To summarize, coloboma is a special situation with a high incidence of detachment. Location of the break and pattern of the detachment is unconventional. Classic principle of detachment surgery do not apply here. Vitrectomy plus silicon oil, engineering, silicon oil injection is a preferred technique, which gives us satisfactory final surgical outcome of more than 95% success. To tackle SOR very carefully, as there is high recurrence rate and there is a high increased risk of IOP in a post operative period and even post SOR. So, you have to monitor intraocular pressure closely in these eyes even after silicon oil removal. I think, thank you very much. I'll stop here and I think we'll go ahead with the question and answer session if you have any. Thank you, sir, for a very interesting presentation. and for as, uh, as is the usual with your talks, giving us all the points very concisely and precisely through. Uh, uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, we are open for questions. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, sir. Dr. Madan here, sir. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, man. how are you? I'm doing fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, how about uh, inducing a PVD over the uh, ICM area, sir? Inducing a PVD over the retina is fine. As you said, it is uh, that itself is difficult. Yeah. But over the colobomatous area, we find it really difficult, sir. Can we just Sometimes, leave that yeah. step or how to go Generally, ahead? What happens when you start inducing PVD? Okay. Along the disc and subsequently keep on coming. Once you get the age, as you know, uh, I, I routine in, see, initiating age is extremely difficult extremely difficult. You have to spend a lot of time. But once you get the age and once you start separating, slowly it starts coming up. The problem on the detach on the retina, normal retina is because that retina is mobile. So you don't have counter resistance. Once you start separating, I think it generally over the coloma area, over the ICM, it generally comes up uh, once you start once you start separating. And somehow I didn't find a 
that difficult inducing on the because i start somewhere near disc or around the age of the disc because that is the only landmark you have we have to grasp and then once you start inducing i think it will just start separating what tip i would suggest is use your port facing away from the retina because you try to induce it will take time you keep on increasing your suction and all of a sudden before you realize what you have is retina come into the port but it is not separated so having the edge of a port away from the mobile retina somewhere near the disc try start inducing start lifting up uh, and tricot now helps us to basically delineate the edge to some extent like life become little bit easier thank you sir thank you very much so there are some questions coming up in the chat box yeah aditi says good afternoon yeah explain the fg again where should we keep the fluid needle well uh, as i said if you have a obvious breaks in a in a intracalary membrane okay then you hold your back flush needle or your suction right there start fluid air exchange there will be some because see the fact if you do not have peripheral break you have breaks only in the intracalary membrane to detach retina you have to have some break along the edge of coloboma along the locus minoris now that those breaks can be very small very tiny so it takes time for srf to come through that so what you have a, you have a little bit low pressure gradual fluid air exchange keep on sucking on a coloboma area and allow slowly air to press the retina down and eventually you see slowly 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 the fluid will keep on accumulating in a colobomatous area and that is most of the time as a series a dependent part you suck it out it flatters there is a situation sometime it does not happen the way i am telling you in, in fact what happen like typically you people also they have not even coloboma is other i suppose you have some break and the break will get blocked with your air and now because air is pushing everything down entire retina great crowded over the disc probably okay we see that part also what you do here is suppose something like that happening and disc is getting like our retina is getting crowded over the posterior pole you restart the fluid look for a peripheral break if is already there or if not you can make a peripheral retinotomy and start draining through that and then go back with your fg When, when do you remove the oil in these cases? The rules is same. I think, uh, as I said, like any other detachments, once the retina is settled, anything after, theoretically speaking, yes, any time after two to three weeks, you can do it. But most of us, we know we do not want to do that. You wait approximately as like any other detachment, definitely not less than two months, but on an average, anything between four to six months, unless oil is coming into anterior chamber, glaucoma, early emulsification, those are the indications. pressure if it is low very only 3% of cases pressure is low majority cases uh, pressure is normal or high so those eyes you can go ahead with sr as usual except you go back but that we do in other eyes as well because previous break or any no or if there is untreated break you examine the fundus carefully and if there are untreated lesions are there seal those lesions before planning sr what is mean by anterior edge of coloboma dr kushal wanted to know basically anterior edge depending on how far anteriorly it is gone sometime it edge is gone coloboma is extending up to ora even on a ciliary body area you do along the peripheral edge and you join with the peripheral normal retina where it join you join the laser with that that uh, uh, schematic diagram which i show but if coloboma is within the retina and beyond the coloboma if you have normal retina again obviously you have you are going to do laser all around coloboma edge also yes uh, from akash like uh, if if we cannot find a break then can can we do retinotomy and laser all around the co yes coloboma edge you have to laser 100% but you can make retinotomy 
for my case it was just happen it was hydrogeny break that helped me otherwise i would have made it in autonomy there yes you can go ahead do that uh, sir there are a couple of questions from the youtube uh, channel also uh, yeah. there is uh, dr chetan asking after sae the laser has to be done completely around the coloboma even if coloboma is involving disc and macula yeah we have to do that but what happened that's why we can do a use a red laser and you do very very light burn there are couple of reports that you come up to the disc margin and over that where the disc can macularize there you can just spare that uh, to start with and but you basically the problem with that then these are the eyes sometimes you can get away with or sometimes come back with recurrence it may just happen because see the the fact you want to do laser or around because you do not know where the break is okay if you don't specify a break you can just i and laser do that break only but fact you want to go all around that means we do not know where the break is we can have more than one breaks and it may just happen that you cover everything leave that area and break would have been only there that possibility is there and so these are the eyes so these eyes can come back with recurrence so i would prefer we do laser all around but only thing is you ensure you are not doing full thickness laser when you are doing around the disc and macula and you do very very light burn just subtle discoloration and that will take care of don't do full thickness laser uh, there's another question from dr winston who asks is there a role of forceps or a pick in inducing pvd uh, in such cases yes whatever way you want you try try to induce whatever possible way with a minimum damage to the retina sometime with what happened now because of this uh, port optimization very close to posterior near the tip and you can generate lot of suction probably you may not be necessary but sometime i would say yes using forcep you will be safer because at least you do not have suction you can grasp the vitreous exactly and try to pull that out yes no harm going ahead with there is another question role of ilm peeling uh one thing i want to i think everybody has become a fashion once you are doing vitrectomy go peel ilm please ensure please understand ilm is not a appendix please try to understand that okay there is no role of ilm peeling here and even unless is necessary except probably macular i would say even routine also regmatogenous detachments i own unless there is an associated macular role i own peel ilm diabetics i own peel ilm let me put it that way very clear do you need to do extensive base dissection in coloboma case or we can escape this part if we do not put the 240 band well because again most of these eyes if you want to save the lens if patient is speaking and as you saw most of these patients are young adults around 20s and 30s sacrificing lens without sacrificing lens you cannot do a good i would i don't use base dissection but can have good debulking at the vitreous base if you want to do you need to sacrifice lens and if you are not doing probably i would prefer to support with 240 band i never depended till now if a regmatogenous rd also i would say definitely support would to forty band base excision what we do for like a pvr cases may not be necessary but do good good uh, debulking without compromising or without creating multiple breaks or something this one i'll try to like a don't create hydrogenic multiple breaks near the base or ora another question is as laser is done very close to our inside macular area well definitely fovea you would like to avoid and quite some time as i say 60% of cases you have 66% of cases fovea is within the macular area maybe within the uh, coloboomatous area so we don't have choice probably you will have a light burn where anticipated area of coloboma is there is there a case of macular hole with rd in coloboma what steps we can change now if if there is a macular hole within the coloboma then obviously you are not going to flatten that we can't do much you just ignore that and do laser along the coloboma margin but if macula is within the healthy retina then probably yes i would do ilm peel and once retina is flattened down 
you do laser along the coloboma margin, fovea is spared, macula is spared, probably there are better chances of having a vision in these eyes. Any alteration in position of the encircalage in microcornea, microthalmic eyes. Generally, the aim is to support the posterior border of vitreous base. Okay. So that is what we are looking at it. So you adjust your encircling band depending on case to case. Ideally, I would suggest you can localize where your vitreous base is and try to support that area. Prefer site for retinotomy in these eyes. The rule is same. Generally, try to be in a superior quadrant where you can, and at the same time, it should not be too peripheral that you cannot approach it. Otherwise, while doing FG, if you can't reach that one and halfway through or you cannot drain the SRA properly, the whole purpose is defeated. So it is posterior, anteriorly, but posterior enough that you should be able to approach, able to drain SRF properly, should be a convenient for you, should not be near the blood vessels, and preferably superior quadrants in the meridian of sclerotomy. There's another question of about what are the precautions to take to prevent migration of silicon oil into subarachnoid space? Well, that we cannot take any precaution here. Probably the uh, only thing you can do is avoid overfill, avoid high intraocular pressure because high intraocular pressure only probably push the oil bubble through the whatever fistula or defect in optic nerve or optic disc coloboma if it is there. There's another question. If RD is caused by a peripheral break not involving coloboma and that break is not buckleable, can we leave the edge of coloboma unlasered? Yes. Definitely, yes. Then treat like any other regmatogenous detachment, laser only the break, and that's all. And then probably, typical case, you can get away with uh, gas only. You may not need to have silicon oil also. Uh, see, heavy silicon oil, somebody is asking, should we make a rule of using heavy silicon oil in coloboma cases? It's nothing like an emulsification is early. Emulsification is early in any any young patient compared to elderly patients. Okay, and not necessarily that heavy silicon oil. What do you mean by heavy silicon oil? Are you talking higher density, 5,000 centristoke versus 1,300, or uh, you are talking about fluorosilicon? I I think somebody can specify that. But emulsification is same. Tamponading effect is same. Removal will be a more difficult if you have a heavy silicon oil. I think it don't have any added benefit of heavy silicon oil. And if you're talking, somebody is asking about fluorosilicon, which is not available, not approved by in India yet. You have to buy it in a black market. Another question is, what is the benefit of fluorosilicon in coloboma? Yeah, he has said 5,000 cents. Is See, there's no added advantage as far well as um, uh, tampon adding effect or surface tension is concerned. So I think 5,000 and 1,300 doesn't make difference. Emulsification, because eventually you are planning to remove in these eyes, because otherwise if you have a specky eye, lens becomes start, start becoming hazy, and 5,000 is not easy to remove. So don't have any advantage. Previously, 5,000 we used to use for eyes where HIV and all those things where we thought life expectancy is less. Eventually, these patients are going to die. And so we don't want to remove the oil. But see, most of these patients also are surviving, surviving for a long, living their normal life. So even use of 5,000 silicon centrisox is almost negligible nowadays. I think we almost stop using it. Because as far as tampon adding effect, both are equally same, whether 1,000, 1,300, or 5,000. So anything else? There's a question uh, from Dr. Sachin Shetty on uh, in aphetic uh, eyes with coloboma, how to prevent oil from coming into the AC? Aphetic eyes. Yeah, aphetic eyes. If you have a, there is no iris coloboma, then you do, you can, like any other case, you do inferior PI. But if is, there is a coloboma, if that itself, the coloboma itself act as an inferior PI, that will help you to prevent, unless really there is an overfill or you have a problem with uh, 
like a uh, aqueous uh, secretion and then those are going chronic hypotonic eyes and then they eventually fail with eye otherwise there is no special pre uh, precaution or tips sir i have a question what do you do for aphakia in the eyes with microcornea aphakic with when the eyes are very small when the eyes especially when they have a microcornea uh the practical difficulty is during surgery because of small eyes like a 4 5 5 mm 6 mm cornea so obviously you need to use um, wide angle visualization system and probably once you i mean you surprisingly i think you can work with that quite comfortably manage only issue will be instruments bumping against your hand uh, so try to make clear to me as far away as possible that is one thing sometime because these eyes are generally very small even don't use cannula system just direct entry sclerotomy so that otherwise this 4 mm cannula like our trocar cannula system itself can be sometime reached to a bit vitreous cavity and then manipulation of instrument can be extremely difficult inside that 12 o'clock area superior area you cannot reach with the cannula so best way like a 20 gauge we used to do no cannula system direct sclerotomy and you will be able to manage I think one last question from Dr. Kushal sir, and then we can close. While inducing PVD over coloboma, there are blood vessels which bleed. How do we tackle them? If we do, yes. yeah, you have to be extremely careful. That's a that's a genuine risk. So once you get the edge, it's easy to separate. But yes, over coloboma area, vessels will be there. So you have to be try to be gentle, as gentle as possible. Now, if vessel is traversing through coloboma area only and not coming back over the normal retina through coloboma and then a normal retina, then safely you can cauterize those vessels. And then those area also, if you want to, like as we are talking about trimming the ICM, you can do that. But the vessel is coming over the retina, normal retina back. You have to be careful with those vessels. Yeah, but if it bleeds, initially you try like a, a routine methods increase pressure. Uh, IOP high, hold on, do uh, wait for a while, and if it stops, fine. Otherwise, you don't have choice but to cauterize. So I think we answer all the questions. That's all the questions, sir. Thank you very much for an absolutely excellent presentation and. i think we also had a very lively discussion with a lot of different queries coming up and i hope all the audience had all their doubts on this extremely complex uh, scenario of coloboma rd is sorted out thank you sir and hope to have many more interactions such in the thank future. you thank you very much thank you for giving opportunity and patience hearing uh, you're good to interact i can see familiar faces as well yes. okay. <laughs> lot of them <laughs> thank okay. you sir. okay thank you bye bye sir. take thank care you.